The organization here has been known to break barriers. And that's literally true and it continues to be true today. Uh, and it was true in the sky above us in uh, 1947 when the sound barrier was broken for the first time. If you name uh, an aerospace advance in the last century, it probably had its roots here and may have actually been tested here. And even today, within a couple hours drive of where we're standing right now, name something that's happening in aerospace, space specifically, aero specifically, and it's happening. NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center is unique amongst the NASA centers in that we're the focal point for all of NASA's aeronautical research and most of its uh, flight operations for science and, and research. The uh, Armstrong Flight Research Center was established right after World War II when we were advancing supersonic flights. So we were here for the very first X-1 supersonic flights. Uh, we were here for the X-15 hypersonic flights. And now we've got the X-59 coming in, which will be the, the next X airplane down the line, which will demonstrate quiet supersonic flight capabilities. And the nation's first jet engine was flown off the wake bed that's very near where you and I are standing today in 1942. Uh, and all of the uh, rocket engines that powered the early space flight were tested on Lehman Ridge, which is a couple miles off my right shoulder right now, where we're still doing all the rocket testing for commercial and military launches today for the nation. And so those are just a handful of examples of things that have direct impact that are not directly military, but that this base has supported. If you've flown on an airplane recently, a commercial airplane recent, recently, there's a really good chance that it's emergency braking system and emergency braking capability and its single engine takeoff capability were tested on the runway and the lake bed. That's within three miles of us right now. Uh, we had a, uh, what's known as a sled track, which is a rocket test track here that was, that was uh, doing early, how much can a human body handle accelerations and decelerations? Um, we did it because we needed to know what people could handle in an aircraft but one of the benefits that you literally use this morning is the seatbelt. So we, we decided how much deceleration could you handle and how do you distribute that on a human body via the work that was done at Edwards by one of the pioneers here at Edwards. It, good examples of where we've provided um, technology back to industry or the aircraft industry is with digital flight control systems. We, we were the first to fly digital fly-by-wire. Now almost every airplane in the world that comes out is a flown digital flight controlled airplane. Engines, we've improved engines, new uh, c components in the engines. Uh, we've improved airfoils through making aircraft more efficient flying through the air. So there's not a single airplane in the world today, modern airplane, that does not have NASA technology, and almost all of it was flight researched and flight tested here at Armstrong. So one thing that I think a lot of people don't, un don't really have an appreciation for is the value, and I mean that in a dollar term, the value that this installation brings to the community. Uh, military payroll alone is about $150 million a year, just for the folks that are stationed at Edwards. When you add in the government civilian uh, payroll on top of that, it's about $750 million a year. The value of the contracts that are being executed at Edwards are about $1.3 billion. And so that's a significant immediate economic impact, but it's the future value of those that are significant to the community. The Armstrong Flight Research Center has an annual budget of about $350 million a year. We have about a thousand employees who live in the local community and bring good jobs to the community. That $350 million a year doesn't just evaporate, it goes into paychecks, salaries, subcontractors, uh, support, food, logistics, health, medical, everything it takes to keep 1,200 people uh, active in supporting our flight research mission. Uh, a big part of this valley and a big part of what makes Edwards very special and makes us perform well are the people. And so the people that work here that also live in Kern County and Cal City to Hatchby. Uh, Mojave are really the, the beating heart and the culture of what makes Edwards Edwards. Um, Edwards has the most robust and the most genuine civilian military support group I've ever seen. We have a competitive advantage in America and, and one of the competitive advantages we have is a place like this. A place where people can do what they enjoy, do what they like, contribute in a competitive way to the value that our nation brings to the world. Uh, and we don't have mass against our primary competitor nation but we do have some things that they'll never have. We have freedom of choice, we have freedom of speech, 
Um, one of the missions that Edwards has today is we, we make ready airmen to deploy today to employ or fight tonight. And they are literally in harm's way right now. Uh, one of our primary missions is taking care of their families while they're gone. The county does an awesome job and the community partners we have here uh, do a great job taking care of our, our airmen's families while they're deployed downrange. Three other mission sets that we're fighting in, uh, this will be broadcast most likely on something that resembles cyber or a network. And we're fighting in cyber. Our adversaries are picking at us and poking at us and not just us, the military, but us, a nation. A third combat front, we're fighting against a virus. Uh, and I'm really proud to have been a part of the, the base and the place that was for the first year plus of the pandemic, uh, what I called a green dot in a sea of red. Uh, the folks that worked here and lived here did an exceptional job of doing counter COVID measures, keeping our incident rate low and our fatality rate extremely low. The fourth one is the banner mission, the test mission. It's the modernization fight. Um, and we are not fighting literally in the modernization fight today. However, we are fighting today, doing our combat mission today in garrison so that future generations of airmen, lieutenants, uh, airmen, airmen, and civilians can take the fight to our enemy in 2030, 2035 and beyond. And so that's what usually gets the majority of the press and the majority of the highlights, but it is only just one of the four major, major emphasis items that we have. Yeah, what's unique about the Armstrong Flight Research Center is that it's our ability to integrate very complex, one-of-a-kind aircraft. We take uh, ideas and modify aircraft, validate aircraft design and composition, and provide data so that th that data can go to industry to help improve the next generation of aircraft. From a mission perspective, uh, the next year is going to see significant advances in all the major weapon systems that we have. Uh, we'll continue to shoot the nation's hypersonic weapons out of here, well, on airplanes that take off out of here, and we'll, we'll take them over the Pacific. Uh, major advances in F-35, we'll continue to, to expand the KC-46 operational capability. Uh, we are literally testing as they build the B-21 uh, at the factory, uh, and we're prepared to test it here. Uh, we're also testing the mission systems in Florida uh, as they are building out those mission systems for the B-21. Uh, and we have uh, many other platforms and programs and projects like that, like the T-7, so our nation's next trainer, that will be here and flying here in the next year. So on any one of those lanes and dozens more that we don't have time to cover, I'm super excited about. I get a lot of reciprocal uh, support, advice, counsel from the county leadership. Uh, I, I appreciate the candor and I know they appreciate the candor right back. That type of peer level conversation is fantastic. Um, the other thing that's super valuable from the county specifically is the advocacy that they give on behalf of the people that are here in Sacramento. 